What is going on guys? Name is here bringing you a brand new video. Now, Cold War has been absolutely incredible. We've been having a good time uploading all these latest videos that we've had playing the game and streaming. Once again, twitch.tv slash Nameless live every weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Refer to my Twitter at Nameless for updates if something changes. But the game has been great, right? Everybody's been loving it. All these tournaments have been super fun. I've partaken in a few of them. Got second place in one of them and it was a good time. But the first big patch is in after the launch week. So let's go over the patch notes and talk to you guys a little bit about the changes that happened to Cold War. All right, guys, so the big change that they made to the game was the FFAR1 got nerfed hard. Like, you, it's not even used anymore in competitive play. Uh, they increased recoil. They slightly reduced the max damage by 3.5%, 28 to 27, so not crazy. But they reduced the max damage range by 34%. And the recoil got increased a ton as well. So it got nerfed into the ground. Uh, they kind of, I think, over nerfed it. Uh, my suggestion for fixing the FFAR would be to increase the time it takes to pull the gun up. So the ADS speed, make it a little bit slower and then maybe reduce the fire rate or just reduce the range that the weapon has. So it's only good as like a as a versatile up close AR and you have to hit really good shots long range. I thought that that would have been great if they just did that to it. But they sort of nerfed it a little bit too hard, but I'm sure the guys at Treyarch, like they'll pay attention to the update, see that people aren't using it and tweak it once again, right? Like this is an ever changing, evolving process where things will get fixed, hopefully because the gun was really fun to use. It was just a little bit too overpowered. So I knew that it needed a nerf, but maybe not as significant as this. So here's a clip of how it performs after it got nerfed in today's patch. Let's check it out. Sorry for the quality, guys. It's a Twitter clip, but man, it is recoiling so high up in the sky. It's just going crazy. Like these these fights against an AK, it's going to lose it every time. Even a QBZ, it's just too much recoil. They nerfed it really, really hard. So hopefully that'll get changed in the future. Okay, another one is the submachine guns. They reduced the base effective damage range by 33%, added more character to initial recoil by tweaking several bullet trajectories. Um, so basically, it got nerfed a little bit, right? Like, so most submachine guns got nerfed a little bit. They buffed the MP5 back to where it should be. So I like that because the MP5 is gonna be super good. But some of the other machine guns, obviously they're not gonna be as powerful from range, but getting rid of the FR, it's gonna make these subs a little bit more true subs. The FR won't, is not the gun anymore. So it's not gonna gun the submachine guns up close. So you have like AKs, you'll have Krigs, and then you have subs, which are gonna be completely superior up close. And then the subs super long range, obviously aren't gonna work that well, which is how it should be. So I don't mind this update all right guys so for all tactical rifles they basically nerfed the crap out of them because they were all super op uh like the m16 and the aug were like way too good um so the m16 got uh nerfed it into the ground well not into the ground it's still probably very usable but it got nerfed uh five different things that they changed the sprint to fire time slower um the reduced max damage range by 15 percent maybe not enough because you can one burst up close and that's pretty op uh, but at least it takes longer to aim in and increase the delay between bursts. So uh, I have yet to test that, but I'm thinking that that is going to be fixed. And they did some things to some of the other weapons that aren't used that often. Uh, for sniper rifles, they didn't nerf them as much as I thought that they were going to do. Uh, they should have nerfed the sniper a little bit. It's a little bit too OP. The aim assist is a bit too strong. It feels like you have sticky aim like everywhere when you're using a sniper rifle. Um, and it's going to be a big problem in competitive play. And once pub players start using snipers and get good with them, it's going to get really annoying for a lot of you guys that just pub stomp as well. I'm telling you, I'm not even a sniper. And in this game, I feel like I can just absolutely drop quad feeds. Um, so that's one thing that they're going to have to fix. All right, guys, I stepped away for a quick moment because I got an order from Pizza Roll. Shout out to Totino's. They Instacarted me a ton of pizza rolls. Um, I have like four or five bags in here, which is definitely not going to help the diet, but it's going to be really good with some Cold War codes on them. I'm playing in the Totino's uh, 20K tournament coming up on Tuesday, the 24th. Make sure you guys tune in. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and I said a quick shout out to them, man. So thank you. Sorry for the, for the short break. All right, so we were talking a little bit about snipers, right? So snipers are definitely a little bit too overpowered in Cold War. I think that they should adjust them a little bit more. So far, they've adjusted the sprint to fire times to account for early blends such interruption, adjusted movement speed, impact, and firing to intended values to make each shot feel more powerful. So I actually made that a little bit better. Fine-tune the barrel attachments that improve idle sway to provide a unique feel in each gun. So they need to, they need to up the idle sway time and maybe make them ADS a little bit slower uh, to fix the problem that we have with sniper rifles. And if they, they really want to fix it, they will they would adjust the auto aim that you have on the sniper. Uh, didn't nerf the, the pistol, the 1911, which I wish that they did, but maybe we'll see it in the future. 
Uh, and then they did some changes to some of the game modes, right? So they did that. They uh, did something to some of the score streaks. Uh, a couple of them got you know better. A couple of them got worse. As it stands right now, we need them to be gained a lot slower. At the last third of every pub game, everyone has a streak, which is something that I hope gets fixed. They also changed where the bombs are at on Moscow. Uh, I like the change to the bomb site that's near Eskies. They moved it over. So now when you're coming out of Eskies, you sort of had a, have a heady to work with, which I think was a massive good change and positive for the competitive future of Search and Destroy Moscow. They fix a lot of crash issues. For those of you that play on PC, uh, it's been crashing a lot. It's still happening quite often, but they fixed it to where it's not happening as often, which I definitely appreciate because that is very annoying. It's happened to me in games when I'm going back to lobbies or trying to join a crossplay game. It's been happening. So hopefully that that gets even better in the future. But you can see right here that they, they fixed a lot of the problems. And that's about all like the big major changes to really talk about. Uh, other than that, it's like a few other tweaks that you might have not even noticed. But um, so far, so good for the game, man. I've been enjoying it, uh, especially just playing S&D in competitive matches has been so fun. Uh, the gameplay videos, the last two have both done so well. So I'm going to continue to upload the gameplay. Um, but before I leave this, I just want to talk a little bit about the gun that you guys can use now. Because I know a lot of you guys are going to be wanting to know which weapon is going to be the weapon to use in place of the FFAR. And it's going to be the AK-47. And I have a clip of a, the attachments going through them quickly and briefly uh, to teach you guys a little bit about it. But right now the AK actually has like anti-recoil. It recoils down. So when you're shooting, if you shoot them in the chest, it's going to hit them in the head. And the headshot multiplier is so strong in this game that it makes the gun absolutely incredible. Like the AK is going to be used like two players on every team in 4v4 format. It is very good. And you guys need to put this class on because you will be frying with it. Watch the next couple of gameplays we're going to have in the next few days. It's going to be AK-47 and it is a beamer. Anti-recoil on your AK-47. This is the class to use. It absolutely beams. I'm going to show you guys it right now. Uh, your muzzle is going to be muzzle brake 762. You're going to run the liberator uh, barrel. And the reason you run this is for bullet velocity because you can see it's 980 milliseconds or whatever measuring that they use which basically means your gun's going to be more hit scan so your bullets are going to connect faster um if you want more damage you feel like you're not killing fast enough with that you can put on the damage range uh but that's going to reduce your bullet velocity to 490 and i just think that's too big of a take too big of a takedown no pun intended uh so run the liberator and then you can run the steady aim laser uh the under barrel the spetsnaz grip uh, i was talking to my friend about this why he runs this and basically it's because he wants to get that extra recoil control um, and the movement speed on your gun really isn't going to be that useful. So that's pretty much the only viable barrel and then 40 round mag Also the elastic wrap just because of the flinch resistance It's going to give you the ADS time. You're going to want that and then the skeletal stock um, It's going to help out where the other attachment but anyways guys That's going to do it for this video much love to every single person who tunes in every week every day watching the YouTube channel I appreciate you make sure you turn that notification bell on so you're notified every time I upload a new one but until next time, guys, it's been Nameless and I'm out.